Okay. All right. So I am recording. So welcome everyone. Um, we are, we, this is like our first team call of 2018. But this is a reschedule from December and Rachel, thank you so much for being flexible. Um, that last week just got crazy, I think for everyone. So I really appreciate it. I know it was like a last minute reschedule. Um, so just a couple of quick things. So, um, the 80 day obsession, Coach Challenge Group with Autumn. Um, the prep week is this week, and we officially kick off on Monday. If you want to join that group, the last day to have someone order the stuff or yourself to order the stuff to be in it is the 14th. So you can always order the stuff after the 14th, but the price will go up $10 per pack, um, and you won't be able to get into Autumn's Coach Test Group. So just keep that in mind. Um, the Team Cup registration for February starts January 15th. I personally love Team Cup. I'm super excited. The prizes are always honestly the best prizes of any of the prizes they give for Success Club. So if you're into random stuff, which I <laughs> totally am, um, Dana likes random stuff too, apparently. <laughs> um, definitely get yourself on a team. You can um, have now up to two diamonds on a team and one of them can be a star diamond. So you don't have to have just one diamond on a team and it's lifetime rank. So if you've ever been diamond, that counts. Um, the success club trip registration is going on now. So um, if you had success club points in 20. 17, you can wait for your registration. So you're invited to register based on 2017 points and you earn the trip based on 2018 points. So if you have any questions on that, let me know. I did already register um, and actually Doug is going to register too and we're going to take my parents. So that should be super fun. Cool. Um, so that I think is all that I have. Oh, and really quick, um, Jen Richardson is doing the um, shaker cup giveaway for the, her entire downline this month. So if you hit success club 10 for yourself or success club 10 for you and one of your plus two accounts or both of your plus two accounts combined. Um, so like if you hit six and your husband hits four or something that counts and you can get yourself a shaker cup, which is super cool. Um, Jen is being really, really generous. So I'm just going to pull up Rachel's stats because it was a lot and to remember. So I'm sorry, Rachel, I just had on my phone, but it's being slow. So Rachel's going to talk to us about social media engagement and um, she's a five star diamond coach. Who's that? She was, she was a, who was that's, shocking? That's Jillian. Oh, shocking. Hold on. Let me mute whoever that is. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, she's a five-star diamond coach. Uh, she was a 2014 premier coach, a 2015 elite coach, a success club, 10 all-star legend. And she is 56 months in success club, which is almost five years. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. That's amazing consistency. So, um, I'm really excited. I hope everyone has their notepads out and I am recording this. So, um, you know, if you miss anything, don't worry. It'll be recorded for you. So, Rachel, take it away. All right. Hey, guys. Um, I am going to share my screen with you because I actually made a PowerPoint, <laughs> which isn't common. Um, so let me pull that up, and then I will share with you. Um, and then <laughs> that's actually funny that you, when you break it down, and, like, it is five years, so I'll be a coach – um, for five years in April. Um, but it didn't register like that when I first sent that to you. That's crazy. It's been five years that I've done that. But anyway, um, okay. So when I do this present thing, I don't think I can see you guys. So if you have any questions, I'm sorry. And I'll answer them at the end of the thing. So, all right, I wanted to talk to you guys about how to rock your business on Facebook and not look like a total a-hole when you're doing it. And I know surely all of you um, know what I'm talking about in regards to this. You know, it's always those people that sign up for a new business, doesn't have to be Beachbody, um, and then their feed goes from being like pictures of their kids and things that they're doing every day to here's a sale, 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 buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And then, you know, you block them or you unfriend them or whatever the case is because no, too much. Um, so I know that a lot of people are doing different, um, 
uh, social media. I have built my business over the last five years almost exclusively on Facebook and not even um, via my like page. I've done used my like page a little bit, um, but a lot of my stuff is still for my personal page. And I know that people caution you on that, but maybe it's just because I've ran it so well that it doesn't look super salesy and businessy. And so it hasn't been a problem for me. Um, but yeah, so I am just now five years into the business, like kind of starting to dabble in Instagram because I feel like I have, um, mastered Facebook and that's actually my first tip. Uh, well, my second tip, so we'll go on that in a second. So my first tip is don't get discouraged when you start, when you're starting out and I actually have a couple of examples at the end of this PowerPoint about, um, how my Facebook looks like five years ago versus what it looks like now. It's going to take time to build your following. When I started as a coach, I only had about 150 to th anywhere from 150 to like 250 um, friends. And so I have built this, um, you know, slowly over the last five years and I've got like 4,100 friends now and um, a lot of engagement from those people because I do the following tips that I'm going to share with you. So it does take a little bit and you're going to get more likes and comments on things that are not Beachbody related, but that's okay because that's how people actually connect with you in the grand scheme of things. Um, the second tip is I want you guys to choose a social media market and stick to it. And this is kind of what I was talking about. Shalene suggests becoming a master at one and then moving on to another. So, um, I don't want, like, especially as a new coach, like, I don't want you to get in there and be like, okay, so I have to post three to five times a day on Facebook and I got to do my Instagram account. And then I also need to figure out how to do Pinterest. And then I'm going to start a blog and, you know, and then you just basically get to that point where you just have total paralysis and you don't do any of it. So I just try to stick to one thing. Once you master that, then, like I said, I'm just now starting to dabble a little bit in Instagram um, because I do feel like I've mastered Facebook at this point. Um, number three is choose content that's relatable to you and your market. And um, so I don't know if you guys have done avatar training yet, but there's actually a PDF that you can Google. Um, and I think you actually Google avatar training for business or something like that. And there will be a PDF. We want you to print it out and actually answer all of the questions. And um, some of the questions are super easy, like what is your avatar's name, age, how many kids do they have, et cetera, et cetera. And then it gets further down into like the things that they like. And then it gets even further into it. And it's like, what are things that your avatar struggles with? What are your avatar's biggest fears? What are your avatar's, um, what, what does your avatar's worst day look like? You know, and that kind of stuff. And so it actually really makes you think about exactly what you want to target when you talk about things. And so I actually chose a picture of a girl. Her name is Emily. She has two kids. Um, she really loves books and uh, bookstores and Harry Potter. And she has anxiety and she struggles with feeling like she is an adequate mother and things like that. So like I really went really far into my avatar. And so that is how I'm able to craft my posts to reach those people. I'm, I'm talking to Emily. I don't need to talk to anyone else on my Facebook page, but Emily. Um, and then by doing so, I find other people, obviously, that are similar to Emily and similar to me. And then we're able to connect on that level without only connecting via Beachbody or fitness. And I also do what's called um, Me Too, and I call it the Me Too movement. It was actually before the newer Me Too that's recently um, come out. But um, basically, I try to cultivate posts that or craft posts that um, make people go, oh, me too. So I talk about my anxiety or I talk about the fact that I am a mediocre mom um, in regards to organization, even though I have like 14 planners. Um, and I talk about how I love watching television and what I like to watch and things like that. Um, and I talk about my eating disorder and I talk about, you know, all this stuff that like, and I kind of just like slowly throw that out there. It definitely every single day. It's not like, well, I have anxiety again or anything like that. But that way I'm able to, when I do make one of those big important posts that make people go, 
me too. I have anxiety too. I didn't realize that she had anxiety, but she's still doing her workouts and she's still inspiring somebody. And maybe I can do something like that. And so it just makes those people connect with you more on a better level. And so I love doing those. I don't do them as often anymore because it's kind of crazy with my newborn. I have a baby similar to Jillian's baby's age. Um, and, uh, so, you know, it comes and goes on that, but those are always the ones where I get people commenting or messaging me even. And they're just like, I just basically started crying while I was reading your post because I feel exactly the same way and blah, blah, blah. And then we're able to just connect better on that level. <laughs> Um, number four, stick to an 80-20 and sometimes I even do a 90-10 ratio when it comes to personal posts for, versus call to actions. Um, I work out every single day. I don't consider my workout selfie to be beach body related because at this point it's literally just my life. So um, I don't consider that one of my 10 or 20s. Um, but nobody wants a stock, uh, you know, a news feed of stock photos of 80 day obsession or autumn or something like that, constantly talking about what you sell. So if you have something that your kids did or the show that you're watching on Netflix or the book that you're reading or whatever the case is on your news feed instead, they're more apt to pay attention to that and then and comment and like on those posts, which means they're going to start seeing the call to action posts as well. Um, when doing a call to action, you're going to want to add message or comment below. This is pretty basic. Um, that way, if no one comments, you can still um, fake it till you make it on future posts. So, you know, I always add message or comment below. And then if nobody does message me or nobody does comment below, then I'm still able to go back later and say, whoa, I had a, a you know, inbox full of messages, but I still have two spots left or whatever the case is um, to make people more interested in um, what, what it is that you are trying to fill in your challenge groups. Um, people like to answer questions, so you have to ask them, but, but don't make it weird. I talked about this um, in, a, I did, I actually spoke at Austin's Super Saturday about this, um, but there was a while back, like when I first started, my coach, Leslie Cordes, um, she, you know, talked to us a lot about this answering questions things. And I mean, it was just like very basic questions like, do you like um, cream cheese or do you like cottage cheese or, or no? Do you wear socks to bed or no? Do you still wear sleep in a bra or no? You know, do you like crunchy peanut butter or, you know, whatever. But I feel like not only has Facebook gotten word of that, but just in general, like I can always tell when someone's trying to build affinity on their page because it's, it no longer looks genuine when you're asking those kind of questions. Um, so I try to stay away from that. Now I do still do personal posts. Like my husband and I haven't been out on a date since our baby was born and we're going out this weekend. What, uh, which dress should I wear this one or this one? Um, or things like that, or which show should I watch on Netflix? These are the three shows, my like three top favorite shows. Which one should I watch next? Because then those people that comment, like you actually have something to message them about later at that point, right? Like you can message them and be like, oh my God, I just finished like watching Shameless in two weeks and it was amazing. Thank you so much for recommending that. Also, how have you been doing? But I can't very well say, Hey, so you like creamy peanut butter, right? How have you been? How's your kids? You know, so it just makes it more genuine. Um, it makes people actually really like you're able to have a conversation with those people when you talk to them easier. Um, try not to get too political unless that's part of your avatar. I've kind of strayed from this myself over the course of the last couple of years. Um, but nothing too crazy. Um, I have certain beliefs that I feel are important to talk about. I think that other people have the, you know, that same thing, but you also don't necessarily want to turn off like 50% of America, right? When you're talking about, um, stuff. So I tried to keep it pretty, at least humorous when I discuss it. So, um, yeah, you don't want to get too into something like, political because I know that people are just so fired up about that kind of stuff. Number eight, quality over quantity with your posts. I know like when I get started, when I get a new coach started, I'm like, um, yeah, so you're going to want to post three to five times a day so that your Facebook is being shown and this and that, whatever. And I, and sometimes like I can just see the look in their eyes. They're like, 
I literally post once a month on Facebook. I can't do three to five times a day. Um, and so to those people, I just want you to be, understand that it's really quality over quantity. If you can't post five times a day, it's not going to kill your Facebook feed or your algorithms or your affinity, but um, just make sure that the posts that you do do are really good quality posts that people are going to relate to that are, you know, speaking to your avatar and things like that. And always make sure to respond back to people, um, reply to all the comments. There's nothing that I hate more than seeing like a super successful coach on social media that asks a question and then there's just hundreds of comments and no responses back to them whatsoever. Um, because it is social and I feel like you need to give them the attention that they are giving you. And by doing so, then it's kind of like you're patting them on their back. They're going to pat you on the back later. So. Um, and Facebook's new algorithm is all about being social, right? So they want to see you using their reply feature. They want to see you using the heart, the love button, and things like that. Um, and by doing so, then they're going to show you more on your newsfeed. Um, don't chase trends, just be you. you know, that's pretty typical and common. I know that like people follow other coaches and and want to make posts that are similar to that. And I used to do that too when I first started out because I didn't really know what to post or know what to say or know what to do. And really that's not what people loved about me. They like me who I am, which is, you know, no makeup, crazy hot mess. And so that's who I connect with and, and so on and so forth. Um, here is the bonus tip. Um, this actually just started like two weeks ago, but there's a Facebook story now. And every single time you post, you have the option. It'll come up and say, do you want to add this to your story? I just started doing that. And I have so many messages now um, from people. They give me like little reactions. But those people that are watching that story are seeing my everyday life, seeing me drink Shakeology, seeing me drink Energize, um, and so on and so forth, seeing me do my workouts. But also because they've messaged me, I have like full reign to message them back now and I don't feel like I'm sending out a cold message or anything like that because they started this conversation with me. So I'm able to be like, thank you so much for watching um, today. How have you been? What have you been doing? You know, what's going on? Um, and so then that's just organically more people that you get to talk to. Uh, and then I was gonna talk a little bit, it's pretty short. Um, little thing on how to build group using groups for a cold market. So my entire business has been built um, via a cold market. I don't have a local team whatsoever. Everything is all over the country and in Canada and it's all been built via groups. So I, when I first got started, I wrote down five things that I love to do. So planning and Harry Potter and television um, those are usually always on my list. And then I use the search bar at the top of Facebook to find groups and I get added. And then I just hang out in there. Like I usually spend and I have to time it because otherwise I will sit there all day scrolling in groups. But I usually spend like 10 to 15 minutes of focused energy in these groups, just commenting on the first few um, post. I don't go in there and say like, hey, I'm Rachel and I'm a beach buddy coach and I'm running free clean eating groups and so on and so forth. It's like nobody wants to see that. Nobody, you know, they're they're in here because of Harry Potter, not because of Beach Buddy, right? But if you talk to them about like some crazy Harry Potter theory and they connect with you and you're able to go back and forth on that, then I'm able to add them as a friend. Um and get them added to my Facebook page, which then they're going to see that who I am as a person, my personality, and that I do Beach Buddy as well. Um, so be really genuine in your posting. Like I'm a mama I'm to almost four month old. I cloth diaper, I breastfeed. I'm in a um, pregnancy group and like funny story, like this is seriously how easy it is to, to get in here and do this and make these new friends and these new contacts. Um, I added myself to this mom's group because as soon as I found out that I was pregnant, um, actually a little bit before I was pregnant, because it was like a trying to conceive and pregnancy group in this certain month. And um, so I added myself to this group and I started, you know, just commenting on people's stuff and like cheering them on when they got their positive and, you know, saying that I was sorry if they 
had a negative or, and they were moving on to the next group or whatever the case was. And um, I had, I woke up one morning and there was like a comment that was like, Rachel Pipes Allen, this is my name on Facebook. Um, please check your messages. And I was like, uh Oh, did I get in trouble? Like what happened? Um, and it ended up being, they were like asking if I wanted to admin the group because some of the admins were moving on to the next group because they didn't have a positive in that particular thing. And I kind of just went through the comments of, of them talking because once they add you to the thread, then it like shows everything else, everything else populates. And, um, they were basically like, we need to find some new um, admins. Let's use Rachel Pipes Allen. She's always so friendly and encouraging in there. And so it's like, just because I was being friendly, I am now an admin to like 300 girls that just had babies and are looking to get back in shape and, and things like that. Um, so after I, I don't know, like there's, um, I feel like something is, Okay, there we go. Maybe it's better. Um, after I interacted with the same few people a number of times, I always add them as a friend. They know my name from the group, so it's not weird that I do this. Um, and I don't immediately message them and say, hey, I'm starting a new challenge group, blah, blah, blah. I just add their name to a list, and I sprinkle or glip, or I call it, their feed with likes and comments. And then um, that shows Facebook that I want to talk to them more and therefore they want to talk to, they should want to talk to me more. So then my feed starts showing more in their thing. Um, and that builds natural engagement, which turns into getting your call to action seen by more people. Um, and if you can't find a, a group that's related to your hobby, then you make your, your own group. So like a couple of years ago, I like, I don't know if you've ever tried, I mean, I don't know if anybody's as obsessed with Harry Potter as I am, probably not, because I've said this, like, I've said Harry Potter, like, 14 times in this call, I think, but um, I always reread the books every year, and so one year, uh, three years ago, I was like, I'm going to reread it, but maybe somebody else wants to reread it with me, so I actually posted on my page, I'm going to do a reread, um, who would like to join my if I, if I make a group for it. And there was like so many people that were like, I'll do it. I'll, I want to reread out, you know, whatever. So I added them all and it was about a hundred people. And I was like, Oh my gosh, guys, we have like a hundred people in this group. Can you share this on your feed to see if we can get more people to join us? Cause I just feel like the more, the better. Right. And so now my Harry Potter group is like, I don't know, 400, 500 people in there. Um, and I'm able to add all of those people as friends. We already have Harry Potter in common. Um, and they already, again, know and trust me because I'm running this group for them. I also have like a big brother group when that comes back and things like that. So just really, you can find anything that's related to something that you love to do and find something that it's for, that is for that or make your own if you can't. And then I'm going to show you a couple of examples of stuff. This is like back closer to when I started as a coach, but like obviously this that has um, just the stock photo, it had seven likes. And I think that like most of those were from coaches um, versus like two days later, this is just a cute picture of like me and my little boy. Um, and it had nine comments and 56 likes. Um, and then this is more recent now. So this had 29 likes and 17 comments. That was actually back then. I think it has more comments now. Um, but I'm sending out like a whole bunch of samples of Energize um, because of this post. And I ended up having two people order Energize from this post alone as well. So it's just more volume. Like I know it doesn't count as success club points, but obviously more volume. And then um, sometimes your call to actions posts don't have to be so crazy. Like they don't have to be this, like, and this is what you're going to get. And this is what you're going to do. Um, I literally just threw this up one night and didn't even expect it to be anything. And then there was like 63 comments, even some heat on there about her not wearing the same clothes or whatever the case was, which I always find that a little bit of, um, negativity like that, like, kind of helps your affinity because you're able to like banter back and forth with those people and prove them wrong. Um, and then again, like something like this doesn't really get as much attention for likes and for comments. It's just kind of like a, like a stupid little um, call to action for my coaching versus this one. 
um, which is more my style anyway, that had 41 likes and 21 comments. Um, so, you know, just like kind of playing around with it, like it's definitely taken me um, time, obviously almost five years now, um, to build this business, but, but I think that it's pretty successful um, and, and it's able to be done like that. So I'm gonna check the comments now because I wasn't able to um, see anything. And if you guys have any, um, you guys have any questions, then you are welcome to um, I was talking on mute. You guys can also just unmute yourself and ask any questions um, that you might have. I really like the simplicity of that, Rachel. Like, I feel like, you know, just keeping it, it was like super simple for people that are, you know, like just starting out and have a personal page and just want to start getting some great engagement. So I thought that was awesome. And I commented about this too, but what you said about the, what is that called? Um, where you like ask for opinions on stuff. What is that called? Oh, like affinity building stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so they're cracking down on that. If it's, if there's something in the algorithm that's picking up on that. So if you're like constantly asking stuff, they're going to start like, docking your post, but if it's like not really businessy, you can seem to get away with it more. Yeah. And you really, I mean, and I, it's even just how you word the stuff. Like it's just a real fast, you know, thing like, like the, they're, they're also really cutting down on those stupid, like hit like, if you like this or hit heart, if you like this, they're cutting down on that, like hardcore. Um, but, uh, well, I kind of lost my train of thought on what I was going to say with that. Um, crap, but yeah, so whatever they, they're cutting down on that pretty intently, but if you kind of just make it your thing, then it's going to, you know, really go, um, not be an issue. And, and what I like about being able to build this business like this is that you don't have to spend any money to do this. Like I have spent money on Facebook ads and I have built a little bit on my like page and whatever, but it just kind of got to the point where it was like, I was, I felt like I was constantly throwing like over a hundred dollars a month in ads over there, um, just for likes even, and then wasn't getting the stuff back. And I know that there's a couple of trainings that people have done and put together, but I'm just so not focused enough to actually watch like 14,000 videos on how to do something. Um, so I haven't really delved into that. And, um, like I said, I've been okay so far. I know there's been a couple of people on the round table that have actually had their Facebooks deleted or whatever. And dear Lord, God forbid that ever happened to me. Cause I don't know what I would do. Cause I'm on Facebook all the time. But, um, anyway, I think if you do it like this and you just kind of continue to make it social for you and not necessarily like just a crazy buy my stuff thing all the time, then it should be okay. Yeah, I just ping to like, there's a lot of, but Facebook is changing their music. People got their Facebook deleted for like playing music that isn't theirs and it's legal. Um, but now Rachel, I heard that Facebook is somehow getting around that. So it may not actually be an issue for that much longer. So yeah, yeah they're like buying some, I don't know who it was, but yeah, I saw that too. So that's actually interesting. I have gotten deemed a couple of times, like 24 hours in jail or whatever. Um, because I've done that. I, I eventually just stopped. And honestly, now it's kind of better to do videos where like my kids are in the background, like doing something or like ever's crying or, or she's like giggling or whatever the case is. Cause obviously people, you know, want to see that or you don't really have to worry about video or music at all because people are seeing the videos, but they're not always clicking that they want to watch it and have the sound on at the same time. So. Yeah. What is your thought on this while we're talking about affinity posts? I had heard a training that said something to the effect of like, okay, so like the other day I did an affinity post with my Christmas tree and I just said like, you know, who else has a Christmas tree up? And it got a bazillion comments because everybody apparently feels super passionate about the Christmas tree. But by the time I wanted to go and make my post at night, okay, because obviously that was a very well thought out plan. I posted that Sunday morning so that Sunday night I could make my post. 
everybody's still commenting about the freaking Christmas tree. Like, I'm over it, guys. Stop. Like, I want you to pay attention to my other post. How do you feel? I heard somebody say that when your post is doing so well like that, not to post because then you're almost competing with yourself in the feed and to wait for your other posts to kind of like die back a little bit. I mean, maybe I'm just overthinking it, but I'm like, I don't want to have this word like, yeah, I'm competing with myself. I think that it's still actually, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, if you're scrolling, sometimes it'll say like, Rachel has posted and it'll actually have like all three of them in a row. Like, more. Oh gosh, I've never seen that. Okay. Um, maybe it's because I post a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it'll actually show like this person's posted and it'll have like a, its own special box even. And it'll have the three, because I'll actually notice that I will get couplets of comments. Like I'll have somebody like and comment on one thing and then immediately like and comment on another. I know they're not actually going to my page and doing that. So I think that Facebook is showing them together. So it's funny you say that. I think I've seen that too. Yeah. So and yeah, and I thought like, gee, what are they like on my page, like <laughs> scrolling through? Well, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. So I think that's how they're doing it now. And what I always do if I want to, um, I don't know about like competing against my own post, but if I want to revive a post, like I feel like it didn't do as well as I wanted it to, I will have my husband go and comment like two days later with something really funny. Um, and then, you know, people in that soccer feed over there, they'll see like Aaron Allen commented on something that Rachel said. And I think my following like really loves my husband. He's, you know, always coming up with some snarky thing to say or whatever. And so they usually always go back and like watch and go and see what he said and then comment again or something like that. Like, oh, like actually he wanted me to mention this because we talked about like the creamy and whatever peanut butter, like don't say creamy peanut butter and, and crunchy don't ask do you like creamy or crunchy peanut butter because who cares but we actually did an entire post about peanut butter because he totally bought like low fat generic brand peanut butter from target one time and i like publicly shamed him about it and still to this day people are like oh my god did he buy more low fat peanut butter like i mean and that was and almost a year ago at this point, I think like, and we still joke about it every once in a while. I think for like an entire week, I, I, oh, it was around the time that that unicorn frappuccino thing came out. So I actually did a live video and it was like a woman and man who buy, buys low fat, um, target brand peanut butter, try the unicorn frappuccino for the first time, you know, or whatever. And so like every single post I did was basically like, mother and man who buys low fat peanut butter and so then it kind of just like went on and on and on with that and like still to this day like i'll like I, aaron's in the doghouse and i'm like did he buy low fat peanut butter what happened <laughs> you know so that was a fendi building and about peanut butter but nobody cares if you actually like crunchy or peanut just don't like low fat peanut butter guys don't do it hey rachel would you be willing to share your powerpoint i know carla just asked she can review the okay cool yep yep so we're good there i don't know if she's still on oh there she is okay i was responding to the copyright thing about your facebook getting shut down carla and not about the powerpoint because that that's the only time um whitney webb's got shut down she got in trouble for like three videos and finally they shut her down so yeah i would literally die like if I woke up and I couldn't sign on my Facebook, I would be like, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, but I think Facebook's claiming they can get sued for like hundreds of millions of dollars. So they're trying to cover their butt too. I see that. Basically. Yeah, totally. So. Um, oh, I was going to, I know what I was going to say now. So I don't know if you've seen, and I'm sure you have, because I swear like everyone does it, but they're like, uh-oh, Facebook's algorithm it, rhythm changed again. If you're seeing this post, can you please come? Nobody cares. Don't do those posts. Like, it doesn't matter. I have literally never once done them, and my affinity and my, like, comments and likes are far higher than those people that do those. Like, I, I just think it's another um, affinity grabbing type post that Facebook's going to eventually shut down. So just make your content your content, you know? Any other, questions? any other questions you guys can just send me yourself rachel's super cool she won't like bite you or anything so 
you were in the court of force group with me, right? Where I was like, not really in there. I was like, you know, <laughs> but I do love your story so much. Like I talk about you all the time with my husband. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. So I saw Joel this weekend. He came to Boston uh-huh. for Saturday and I was like, Hey, do you remember that girl that was in your court of force group? Cause he was super nice. He reached out to me a bunch and he was like, you know, and I was like, you know, she came by a car and she can do And he was like, yeah, what happened to her? And I was like, yeah, it's me. And he was like, what? You're great. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> like, Is that your baby? I'm like, yeah. He was like, yeah, that's that was a crazy thing too. too. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's super nice. And who else was in there? Oh, you weren't in the room, Jill. Um, but when we were in the photo- photography room beforehand, he totally got naked. He was like, I'm just going to get changed for the workout. We were like, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you go yeah, right in there, dude. I don't know that he likes me very much because I had like a whole bunch of questions all the time. Oh, no. <laughs> so he's, like, he was so incredibly nice. He was. So I saw cool. him at um. He, they stayed at the Ritz Carlton at Summit, and so like we were actually walking down while I was like, you know, I don't know, thirty four weeks at that time to um to go to his workout, and I was I saw him, and I was like, hey, can I come over? You know, because I know that they have their like thing, and it was like literally five o'clock in the morning. He's like, yeah. I want to or whatever. So I was like, I just want to say hi and blah, blah, blah. And I had like a little shirt that said baby brawler on it. Cause he was, he's not a more, like he was like, you know, he, he's very chill. Like, I don't think that he gets up, but he's not like regimented. He's no, you know, he's more like. Just he, whatever, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Low key. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, anything else you guys? I just feel like you have some good, really basic tips now. Like, I feel like this is a great thing for, I know there are some newer coaches and some people kind of jumping back in. And, um, I mean, I got some good tips too, obviously, but I think that like really, this is like really easy, basic stuff and shouldn't, I hope this wasn't like, oh, like over anyone's head. You know what I mean? I feel like it was very wasn't like super and don't you know Rachel I love that you're like don't worry about being on 500 platforms and you're like like you know do what works for you and I totally agree with that yeah I mean I really have like I tried all of it like I tried doing snapchat every day and insta stories every day and facebook every day and you know everybody like uh like Meg uh Wazinski at the time or I think I don't know how to say her last name but um uh, she did a wake up call like, a couple of years ago about how she uses Pinterest and like things like that. And I was like, need to get Pinterest started. And I like spent all this money on a blog at one point in time. And I like literally have never posted in like four years on that. You know, it's just, you have to, you know, and I did that because Melody Mitro does her blog and it's so awesome. And I tried to do Snapchat because Rayno Odell was super successful on Snapchat. And I try, you know, and it's just like, look, find your thing. You know, it doesn't have to be everybody else's thing. Cause I, I'm, I literally don't do anything in a day. So like, you know, it doesn't. Yeah, no, I like that. And it has to be enjoyable. Like I will tell you that when Snapchat was hot, like after it was like after summit 2016, when Gary V was all about it, I like tried it and I was like, I freaking hate Snapchat. Like I, hate this. this is not enjoyable for me. And I, and I stopped. Like, I don't even have the app on my phone anymore. I was like, this is not for me. I actually do like Instagram stories and I do post on them pretty consistently because I enjoy them. I yes, do not same. like Snapchat and I do not, my Pinterest like automatically posts, like I have it set up so it will post, but I don't, I don't even log into Pinterest. I don't log into Twitter. Like I don't, I don't enjoy those platforms. I'm not going to use them. Pinterest is like a black hole of, to me. Like I'm like, you know, I try to Pinterest something, you know, those pictures of people like they have like the perfect little like orange pumpkins or something. And then they show like what the person, what it really looks like when you try to make it. <laughs> the fail or whatever. Yeah. It's not for me. So like find mm. your joy. Like if you love Pinterest, go for it, you know? So. I only have Snapchat for the filters. Yes. Yeah. You do awesome filter stuff. Like, you know, you have to find what you, what you like, you know? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. I'm just now really getting into Insta stories and I really like it. Um, but I like that. I'm also like if anybody, like I can see who's watching it and actually can see their name versus like on Snapchat, it would be like 
Jilly123 says hi. And I'm like, who the F is this? Like, I have no way of tracking it. I don't know if she's on Facebook. I don't know. I had like, while I was pregnant, I literally had a conversation every single day with some girl named Sarah, I think. No idea where she came from or how she added me, but she was also pregnant. And like, we talked, but I was like, and then I, and it was like, she knew me so well that it made me feel like I couldn't ask her at that point. Like, it was kind of like that Chandler episode where like, nobody knows his name, but it's now too late for you to actually ask the question or like, or like tell them, you know, that it, his name is Chandler. Like, it, that's how I felt. Like, I was like, she seems to know me really, really well. So she must be on my Facebook or she must be somewhere. I don't know who you are. <laughs> so yeah I like that I'm able to actually see their names and I can click on them and go to their feed and be like okay well I do know that girl okay good you know yeah yeah for sure yeah but if you love snapchat guys don't like be discouraged by us saying oh, yeah. you don't like it there's a whole world of people out there that are rocking snapchat and killing it and building relationships it's just not just not my jam and this business has to be enjoyable for me so anything else no, I just I want to and Jill. I think Jill got on call the call last night too, and tonight, and like a bunch of you guys. And this is a huge turnout for us. So thank you so 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 much for taking the time to be on. This was great. And Rachel, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. And once again for dealing with a last minute reschedule. That was yeah, awesome. no problem. I think Carla had once wanted to say something. Oh, yeah, Carla. I just wanted to say that I really like this particular topic that you focus on Facebook because I have both Facebook and Instagram and I do really well Instagram in a sense of like interaction and engagement with Facebook. I tend to have a bit more of an issue. So I really like that you focus on Facebook for today's call. Yay. Good. Hopefully it helps and you can kind of start building your stuff too. Um, oh, I, I always get in this, like, I mean, it's like a huge pat on my back for me. So, um, maybe, but, um, I'm in a group of women who a lot of them have like issue with multi-level marketing and it bothers me, but whatever, like, um, but they'll always post like people's things like, guess who just joined it works. And then everybody's like, rah, 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 about like how crappy it is and whatever. And I usually always comment something like, oh no, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. I hope that, you know, because I see that we're friends. So I hope that you don't, you know, feel that way about me or you know, something like that. And I always get people that are like, no, Rachel, no, I don't even, you can like barely tell that you sell something like I know you do because I see your posts about it, but I don't like, you don't ever make me feel like I am just a sale to you or something like that. Like you are just really genuine in your posting and stuff like that. So I actually like love following you. And I like, you know, or it's like somebody's like, I wish that I could like just send like, this is how it's done to those people like for you, Rachel and stuff like that. And so that was like a super big compliment to me. Like I was like, okay, obviously I'm doing something right, going about it this way, um, which is good because it makes me feel skeezy if other people feel skeezy, right? Like, so I don't want to feel that way. So yeah. Easy. I have a very good friend that is a um, social media, like she's like a network marketing trainer. Like she runs a course and sometimes I'll ask her a question and she'll be like, I, Oh, she, she'll like literally always be like, Jillian, I forget Beachbody's a network marketing company. Cause like, she's like every coach I follow does it correctly. She's like, I teach people to do what you guys do. Right. Like I teach people how to like, you know, be, you know, not spam people and not, you know, and she's like, I always forget that you're involved in network marketing because you do things so different. So right. I think that like as a whole, what we teach is better. Maybe that's because we're not just a network marketing company. We have like infomercials and we have like whatever. Um, and we, we run support. Like I always say to people, no one's running a support group to help you use your candles. Like, let's be honest. Right. So, um, it's, it's definitely different, but I, I am proud of the way I just did a post tonight. Like I'm just, I'm proud of everything that we do at Beachbody. So me too. Um, yeah. All right. Anything else guys?
You guys good? Becky looks like she's falling asleep, so <laughs> we'll let you guys go. All right, well, thank you again, Rachel. Um, I will send over the PowerPoint. I'll send it out once you send it to me, and I'll get the recording up for everyone. Okay. Did we ever get the PowerPoint the other day from Whitney on? Oh, yeah. You know, I pinged her. I'll ping her again. Okay. The, um, you mean the um, uh, vision board? Yeah. The goal setting. The goal setting. Okay. Yeah. Let me get that from. I just, I pinged. She's been like crazy busy. I'll ping her again. My Whitney, that she took over her husband's Facebook after her Facebook got shut down for all the copyright crap. So that's fun. Okay. I'll ping her right now before I forget. All right. Good night, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.